years ago, God became a man, and he came into this world, and he lived a perfect life that you and I could not live, and then he laid down his life as a sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary, that everybody that puts their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ can be saved. If you trust in your heart and believe that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again from the dead the third day, according to the scriptures, you can be justified by faith and have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that there is nothing that we can do to save ourselves. It is not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to God's mercy that he saves us. It is by the mercy and the grace of God Almighty that we can be saved from his wrath. But we must make no mistake about it. There is a wrath and a judgment of God coming. The Bible says that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God hath been manifest in them. For God has shown it unto them. Even the invisible things of God from the creation of this world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even God's eternal power and Godhead, so all of us are going to be without excuse on the day of judgment. The Bible says that the invisible things of God from the creation of this world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. The heavens declare the glory of God. We have a conscience that tells us there is a creator that we are accountable to. For the invisible things of him from the creation of this world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even God's eternal power and Godhead. So we are all going to stand before God in the way that we can be found not guilty on that day is only by faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died in our place upon the cross of Calvary. He had the wrath of God poured out upon him. God judged his son upon the cross. He died not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Every lie, every act of fornication, pride, hate, jealousy, murder, vengeance, jealousy, all these things. The Bible says one day God shall judge every work. He shall bring every work into judgment of what so kind it be, whether it be good or whether it be evil. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to the gospel. The gospel that we preach to you today is how you can be saved. It is a free gift of God. There's nothing that we can do to earn it. There's nothing that we can do to keep it. It is by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Bible says that the wages of our sin is death, but that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of our sin is death. We are all going to die one day, and it's because of sin. The Bible says that by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. That God created mankind perfect, but that mankind went his own way. The Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Every man has gone his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. The sins of the world were placed upon Jesus Christ. He died upon the cross of Calvary. They put him in a tomb, but he rose again triumphantly from the dead the third day, that you and I might have peace with God. We're all going to die one day, some sooner than later. And the Bible says, as it is appointed unto men once to die, then after this is the judgment. We are out here today because God does not want people to die as enemies. He does not want people to die in their sins and to go to hell. He sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him 
might be saved. He said he is the savior of all men, especially those that believe. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. That is the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. For while we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet for adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die, but that God Almighty commended his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died the death that you and I deserve, so that we might have the life of Christ given to us freely. It is a free gift of God. There's nothing that we can do to earn it. We must just believe. The Bible says, To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, that his faith is counted for righteousness. It says in the book of Hebrews that without faith it's impossible to please God. That's the only way that we can please God is by putting our trust in the finished work of His dear Son who died for our sins and was raised again for our justification. That being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, we might receive forgiveness of all of our sins and everlasting life. But Jesus Christ said, If you believe not that I am He, you shall die in your sins. Folks, God does not want you to die guilty of your lying, guilty of your pride, guilty of your hatred and jealousy and covetousness and thievery. God sent His Son to die in our place that we might escape His judgment and His wrath. God is merciful. God is gracious. God is kind. God is patient. God is love. God is long-suffering. But we have to understand that God is also a consuming fire and that God will by no means clear the guilty. The Bible says that the soul that sins against him, it shall die. And that's why we're all going to the grave today. By one man's sin, death entered into this world. By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. For by Adam's sin, death entered into this world, and so death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek after God. He says that we have all together become unprofitable, that God knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. The only one that God is pleased with today is His blessed Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And that's why we're out here today. We preach not ourselves, by Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus sake Jesus Christ came and he saved us and that's what he does the Bible says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief he died in our place he was buried in the grave and he rose again on the third day for our justification. When you simply trust in the message of the gospel, you are saved from all of your sins, you can be reconciled to God, and you can have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man cometh unto the Father but by me. We have to understand, folks, the Bible says that God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption and death and judgment, but he that sows to the Spirit shall reap life everlasting. And this is the true God that we're, we're preaching to you here today. 
God that created all things for his glory and by himself came into this world as a man over 2,000 years ago. He lived a perfect life that you and I could not live and he died in our place. He paid for the sins of this whole world so that you and I might be justified by his grace. It is all by the grace of God. It's not by works of righteousness which we can do. The Bible says that our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, that in the sight of God we are all as an unclean thing, that there is none righteous. The only one that is righteous is God. Jesus Christ said, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. God is the only one without sin. The Bible says that he is higher than the heavens. But he came into this world. He humbled himself and he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And wherefore God had highly exalted him and given Jesus Christ a name which is above every name, that one day at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As it is appointed unto men once to die, then after this is the judgment. Make no mistake about it, folks. All of us are going to stand before God and have to give an account for the lives that we have lived. And if we are guilty of just one sin on that day, God is going to condemn people. There is a place called heaven, and there is a place called hell. And the Bible says that the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. That is not a place that God made for mankind. That is a place prepared for the devil and his angels. But if people reject the truth and they die unforgiven of their sins, God is going to judge them and condemn them and send them to this place called hell where there is weeping and there is gnashing of teeth. But the good news is that God did not create this place for mankind and God does not want people to go there. So God sent his son into this world who lived a perfect life, who kept all the law of God perfectly, and then he laid down his life as a sacrifice. He died, he was nailed to a cross, he had his uh, nails driven into his hands and into his feet, he had a crown of thorns placed upon his head, and then he suffered the wrath of an eternal God for the sins of the whole world. The Bible says that he who knew no sin was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You can be given the righteousness of God today by trusting in the gospel, how that Christ died for you, was buried, and rose again. You must believe in your heart and understand that we have all sinned. Just one lie, just one act of pride. God bless you guys. One act of pride. Jesus said, even if we look at a man or a woman with lust in our heart, that we are guilty in the eyes of God of adultery. So God tries the heart of man. See, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Bible says that the Lord trieth the hearts, and that the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. He says, who can know it? He goes on to say, I, the Lord, search the reins and try the hearts to give every man according to their deeds. So God one day is going to judge us. Every single one of us are going to stand before God. He says, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So that every one of us here today must give account of himself to God upon the day of judgment. The only way that we can be found not guilty is if our sins are forgiven by the Son of God who shed his precious blood for us when he came into this world as a man and humbly obeyed God the Father and went to the cross of Calvary that he might save many sinners and give them everlasting life, not by anything that we have done, but simply because he is good 
He is gracious and he is full of compassion. That's who God is. But make no mistake about it, folks. The Bible says that God is also vengeful and that he is by no means going to clear the guilty. For our God is a consuming fire. So he is also a God of judgment and he is going to judge people according to righteousness on that day. And the Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I promise you folks here today, God bless you guys, that that is not a way that you want to meet God. You do not want to meet God in your rebellion, in your pride, and in your hatred of Him, and guilty of all your sins. God will freely forgive you and give you everlasting life and cleanse you of all unrighteousness so that you can be presented before Him, not guilty and not condemned on that day. But truly, it is a terrifying thing if you die without the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Every idle word that a man speaks, he shall give an account thereof on the day of judgment. Imagine standing before God and having to give an account for every lie, every act of pride, and every act of wickedness that we have ever done. And that's what the Bible says. He that formed the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? God is the one that gave us eyes and ears. And so God is asking the one that gave us eyes and ears, is he not watching and seeing the things that we do? And the answer is that God sees everything and that God knows everything. The Bible says that there is nothing hidden from the eyes of the Lord. He sees everything going on in this world today. And one day God is going to bring every work into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God is a righteous judge. And there is a day when God is going to judge this evil world. That's what the Bible calls the world that we're living in today, a present evil world. We have so much wickedness taking place in our nation today. We have lying, pride, the love of money, evil, murder, abortion, hatred, jealousy, families are, are turning on one another, divorces, fornication outside of marriage, drunkenness, covetousness, all these things that are taking place and it is just proof that we are living in a present evil world. And God today is being long-suffering. He is being gracious. He is being kind. Because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants every single one of us out here today to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But the sad news is today, folks, is that many people, they have pleasure in unrighteousness more than they had pleasure in the truth of God's word. And so this is the reason that in the last days, people are going to be damned and God is going to send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And the truth is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life, and that no man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's two ways that, that people go today. There's a broad way which leadeth to destruction, and there is a narrow way which leadeth unto everlasting life. And Jesus said, many are there that be which go the broad way, but few there be that find the narrow way which leads to everlasting life. And folks, our world is getting more evil and more evil. None of us here today are promised tomorrow. And Jesus asked the people in his day, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain this whole world and then lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? We have to understand that God gave us a body, God gave us a soul, and God gave us a spirit. And one day our body is going to die. It is going to go back to the dust from which it was given. And then our spirit is going to go up to the one that gave it. And we are all going to be judged. Although our body is going to die, our spirit and our soul are going back to God. And we are going to be judged for the things that we do. 
Our soul is eternal and it is going to spend forever either in heaven or in hell depending on what we do with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Fear not them which have power to kill the body, but I tell you whom you shall fear. Fear him that has power to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is not a place that God wants people to go. So he sent Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, the only wise God, the King, immortal, internal, eternal, invisible, the only wise God came into this world and died for the sins of the world that we might be freely forgiven and justified by his grace and given the righteousness of God, which is by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You say, what am I supposed to do today? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you believe in your heart, and you trust in the finished work of God's dear Son. God gives you everlasting life and forgiveness of all of your sins. All of us have a day appointed where we are going to die. And God does not want any of us to die without Jesus Christ, with our sins unforgiven. Folks, we have to understand that God does not play games about sin. God is not a man that he should lie. God's ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. God is perfect, just, holy, and righteous. The Bible says that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So he's not going to let people go free if they die as enemies of his and guilty of their sins. The only way for us to be forgiven is to trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ who died for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. David said, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord will not impute sin. Blessed is the man whom iniquities are forgiven. Your sins can be forgiven and covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. But that is the only way that our sins can be forgiven today. The Bible says to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, that his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was imputed to him for righteousness. It was counted to Abraham for righteousness. When he trusted in God, he counted God faithful. He knew that what God had promised, he was able also to do. And so God counted it to him for righteousness. And that's what God expects of us today. We must have faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. We all here today know that there is a God. The Bible says that God wrote the work of the law upon our hearts so we know that he created us. We know that there is a God. He has given us a conscience and our thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. So in the day of judgment, no one is going to have an excuse when they stand before him. Even the fact that we have the stars and the moon and the sun is a testimony that there is an all-wise and an all-powerful God. The invisible things of God from the creation of this world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even God's eternal power and Godhead, so that we are all without excuse. God has revealed himself to all of us. We know that he is a righteous judge and that he is perfect in all of his ways. He has shown this to us already. So everyone is going to be without excuse on that day. God gave his law to mankind many, many years ago, and not one single man except Jesus Christ was able to keep the law of God perfectly. God says that we should love him above all things and love our neighbor as ourselves. 
For on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. But every single one of us have been guilty of breaking those two commandments times without number. And God is only going to forgive us if we trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Seek the Lord today while he may be found. He said to call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord for he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. A lot of people today think God is just loving, God is just caring. He is not going to pour out his wrath and his judgment. But we have to understand that God is a judge. God is just. God is holy. God is righteous. God is perfect. And he is a judge. And the Bible says, that shall not be When God rises up to judge this world in righteousness, it is going to be a perfect judgment. God will not pervert justice. All his ways are judgment. Every single one of God's ways are true and righteous all together. And so the only way we can escape the damnation of hell for the sins that we have committed against God and against one another is if we have our sins covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not anything that we can do. There's no good works. It doesn't matter if you go to church every day. It doesn't matter if you were baptized. The only thing that matters is if you put your full heart's trust in the finished work of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to god's mercy he saves us by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the holy ghost which we can receive when we trust in the lord jesus christ seek the lord today while he may be found folks Thankful to be here to give you guys the good news that Christ defeated death on the cross. Paul said, of death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I was once a dead man. You know, Paul said that she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. I was once a dead man, folks, walking in sin and lust. I'm a former heroin addict. I was a mankind abuser, drunk, the vilest of the vile. The Bible says this is a faithful saint and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. This is the will of God today for your lives, folks. God with none would perish, but that all would receive eternal life today through Jesus Christ our Lord. God bless you, man. So the Bible is a big book, and a lot of men make a terrible mess of it. But I'll tell you this, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not complicated. It is that Christ died for you. It's personal. Do you know why? Because you have sin. Do you know why? Because you're unrighteous. Paul said, There is none righteous, there is none that seeketh after God. They're all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. You're not good, and neither am I, folks. There's none of us that seek after God. We don't have 
any righteousness in us. Isaiah said our righteousness is as filthy rags. Do you think you've ever done anything before a holy God? You haven't. The only thing you can do to the eternal wise God is submit to his righteousness. Paul said my prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. So while I am a wicked, vile sinner, because I believe God, because I make Jesus Christ the end of my law for righteousness, God accounts me as a righteous man. What saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and was accounted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. But to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So you see, folks, that's how you're going to be made a righteous man today. It is solely through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The gospel message is a good news message that you do not have to die and stay in the grave. You can be raised up again. Just like you have assurance of your death, we all know that we're going to die. And I even know why we all die. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sin. You ever ask yourself where you're going when you die? Life short, folks. It is a vapor. What is your life? It is a period for a little time and then vanisheth away. I feel like I was 20 yesterday. I'm 40 today. Tomorrow I'll be 60. Next day I'll be dead. What are you doing with your life? Where are you going when you die? Just like you know you're going to the grave, you can know that you have eternal life. If you believe today, right now, that Christ died for you, Listen, you got sin and so do I. The only difference between you and me is I'm trusting God to justify my ungodly self. If you will trust right now that Christ died for you, that he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for your sin, God will justify you freely by his grace. You'll be sealed forever unto the day of redemption in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You just heard it right there. Believe the Lord died for you. Trust in his blood and receive everlasting life. Paul said, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. God wants you to have a promise of eternal life today. What are you doing with your life? Because may God bless you, sir. The Lord wants you to be saved too, even the ones that hate Him. That's how gracious and merciful God is. Do you despise His goodness? After thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasure it up unto thyself, wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, and there is no respect of persons with God. The Bible says that God will by no means 
clear the guilty. Do you know why God will not do that? He can't. God cannot remain a righteous judge while pardoning sin. There's got to be a payment made for your sin. One day you're going to face your Creator, folks. As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. One day you will stand before your Creator. Prepare to meet thy God. God has given you a way out so that you don't have to be condemned to die an eternal death. The Bible says the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable murderers, sorcerers, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. Even the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world they're clearly seen, folks. And the Bible says that they're understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The Bible says there's no such thing as an atheist, only liars, folks. The, they know that there is a God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. You know there's a God, but you know what man wants to do? Because the execution of the judgment is not executed speedily, the heart of man is fully set in them to do evil. Mankind knows there's a God, and because he wants to go and do evil, he convinces himself that there is no God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But one day you're going to stand before Him and give an account of your life. You are going to either receive eternal life because you believe, or you will receive eternal death because God is righteous and He must judge every deed. He's going to bring every work into judgment. That is the God of heaven. He is a righteous God. What does man do with that gospel? It says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, disobedient to parents, inventors of evil things, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. Mankind is so wicked, he takes pleasure in others that are going to hell too. But Paul said, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For thou that judgest, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doeth the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Mankind's judgment is utterly corrupt. We accuse and excuse one another. The Bible says we have a work of the law written on our hearts, folks. Nobody's going to get out of the judgment 
Our man has been left without excuse. His God has put his power and his Godhead in every man. And there is a work of the law written on the hearts of all men. And we use that work of the law to either accuse or excuse one another. And God is going to say, you knew about me and you knew my judgment. What are you to do about the judgment of God, folks? God bless you. We come out here today not to preach to you in fear. We come out here to be the fools of the Lord. We come out here in weakness. Do you know why? Because it is through the weakness of God that He is saving sinners today. Paul said, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach. Not with wasting the words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. says after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew not God it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe the world is so wise that they don't know the God of creation they have convinced themselves that they are wise and the Bible says professing themselves to be wise they became fools. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God gave them over through the lusts of their own heart to do those things which are not convenient. I find the towns we go, the smarter the town is, the less that they know God. The one thing I want you to understand is why we look like absolute fools. That is the very intention of the God of creation. He chose little David to slay a giant. You know why? Paul said that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We look like fools because it gives God glory that no flesh should glory in his presence. This is how God is saving the world. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The gospel has a two-fold effect. It is the power of God in them that believe unto salvation, and it is also the power of God unto death that perish. The Bible says that we are a sweet savor of Jesus Christ unto God in them that are saved and in them that perish. For the one, we are the savor of life unto life, and the other, the savor of death unto death, and who is sufficient for these things. Here's the gospel. There is a holy, righteous God and one day that God is going to judge the world in righteousness. Part two, you're a sinner. Sin puts you at enmity with God. It makes you an enemy of God. Therefore, what are we to do with this knowledge? We've got to submit to the righteousness of God. Paul said, Israel, being ignorant of the righteousness of God, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe. You're either going to submit to the righteousness of God and believe that God can save you solely by His own grace, not any works 
what you've done, or you're going to treasure up under yourself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds. There is no respect of persons with God. And the Bible says that God will by no means clear the guilty. The Bible says that there is none righteous. No, not one. Not me, folks. I ain't righteous. There's none that seeketh after God. They are all together become unprofitable. That means God thinks you plus me plus them plus everybody else together is unprofitable. There's no profit to God with man. It says that there's none that doeth good. No, not one. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. It's unto all, folks. It's being offered to you right now. That righteousness of God. Here you go. It's in the gospel. And it's upon it is upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. Do you know why? For all have sinned, God bless you, sir. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It says we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. You got sin, folks. You're going to have to deal with it at some point. Everybody's going to face God one day. And when you stand before that God, you have to give an account. As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Eventually you're going to have to deal with the righteousness of God. You can either deal with it right now, trust God that can justify you freely, get saved today, or you're going to have to steer, stand before him in judgment. And God will render to every man according to his deeds. God has no respect of persons, and he will not clear the guilty. That righteousness of God is upon everyone that believes. God justifies you freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time, His righteousness. You say, whose righteousness, preacher? God's. God is declaring His righteousness today for the remission of sins to all those believers that are trusting in the blood payment of Jesus Christ. To declare, I say, at this time, His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Paul said, where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You can't earn your way to heaven, folks. I'm not inviting you to church to get you saved. I'm presenting you the gospel of your salvation so that when you hear that Christ died for you, shed his blood for your sins, and you believe that gospel, you will be saved and sealed right now. You don't have to go to church to get it. You don't have to say a little prayer, ask Jesus into your heart, and all that stuff. 
No water baptism has ever saved anyone. Only the faith of men in the Lord Jesus Christ is what saves sinners today. Paul said it is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He didn't come to save the righteous, folks. If you could earn your way to heaven, Paul said Christ is dead in vain. He said, I live, said the Lord. He said, said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. If righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. The Bible says if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. That promise is only given to believers. You don't earn it. You don't keep it. It's a promise. What said the scriptures? Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Abraham staggered not at that promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also, God bless you, that what God had promised, he was able also to perform, and therefore it, you say what? Righteousness. It was imputed to him for righteousness. His faith. That is how you're going to be saved today, folks. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord, who is delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification, therefore be justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot earn your way, folks. The law was not intended to give you eternal life. It was intended to give you a knowledge of your sin. So, preacher, I don't believe that. The Bible says, Now we know that whatsoever things the law said, it said to them who are under the law. Here's why. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. You say, why does God want me to have a knowledge of my sin, preacher, so that you know you need a Savior? Jesus Christ is the Savior of all men, especially them that believe. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of death and hell. If you want to escape hell, if you want to escape death, Jesus Christ has the keys to them both. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ conquered death on the cross of Calvary. He came into the world. He lived a perfect, sinless life. He lived that life that you and I could never live. 
by keeping the law perfectly. And when he died, God raised him up the third day because the law has a promise of life. But you see, you could never extract that life out of the law because you were born into sin. You say, I don't believe that, preacher. It doesn't matter what you believe. It's what God said. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men. Here's why. For that all have sinned. That sin and death was God's judgment when Adam transgressed against God. And so everything in this world that deals with sin and death came through that one man. You say, I don't like that very much, preacher. Well, that's the bad news. Here's the good news. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if by the offense of one many be made dead, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Do you want to be made righteous today, folks? It's only going to come through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You're going to die one day. It is appointed unto men once to die. You know, you only have a couple appointments in your life. There's a time to be born and a time to die. You already check box, time to be born. And when you die and get a grave, they're going to put two dates on your tombstone and a dash in the middle. God bless you. Your entire life's going to be summed up in a little dash. What'd you do with it? How'd you spend your time? It goes fast, folks. What is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanisheth away. This life is called a sore travail by the Bible. It says, This sword travail hath God given to the sons of men to be exercised thereon. You say, why does bad things happen? God's trying to exercise you under godliness. So you'll stop trusting in your own works, trust in what God has done. Get saved, get justified. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It is a promise of God. God bless you, sister. It is God's promise. He didn't give you this world to To shame that we are not ashamed the gospel of his salvation, but he couldn't hear it because of his power. It's so sad. But he's still going to be without excuse. Do you know why? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Nobody will stand before God and say, God, I didn't know. Nobody will stand before God and say, but God, my sin doesn't count because I didn't hear the preachers. The Bible says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Not only do all men know about God, all men know that their sin will equal judgment of God unto eternal death. They know. That's why philosophy is such a popular thing. It's why thousands and thousands of books are written about that year after year. You say, what is philosophy? It's man's vain attempt to try and rid himself of his consciousness of God. Even as they did not like to attain God and their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. God says, fine, you don't want me in your mind. Go ahead, I'm leaving. Do whatever you want. But no, there is coming a day of judgment. God is a God of equity. He is a God of justice. Paul said, times of this ignorance, God winked at. 
but I commanded all men everywhere to repent. Here's why. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. The Bible says, Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. You can have assurance today where you're going when you die. Just like you have assurance that you're going to die, you can have assurance today that you will have everlasting life. Christ said, I, God bless you, sir. He said, I am the true bread. The bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. He said, I am the true bread. Whosoever cometh unto me shall not hunger. Whosoever believeth on me shall never thirst. Christ is the living water, folks. Believe on the Lord today. Come get a drink. This is the gospel of your salvation. I'm already saved. I'm justified. I don't have to do this. I can go home. I'm not under any orders from my church or anyone above me that I must go and preach this to you. I do this solely because I love you. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because here's why we do it, folks. This is the love of God. The love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Because Jesus Christ died for my sins and God rose him up again, that's why I come and do this. If he can die for me, then I can live for him. That's the motive. We're not out here for any other reason than that you would hear the gospel message, that you would trust in the blood of Jesus Christ for your sins, and that God would justify you freely by His grace, because He's that good. I wouldn't serve any other God, and I wouldn't preach any other message. Paul said, in whom you trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. I just told you what it is that Christ died for you. He shed his blood for you. He said, in whom also God bless you. God bless you, people. And who also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Folks, I beseech you, get sealed, get justified. Be saved right now. We know that we're saved because we believe God. When you believe God, you become a righteous man, a righteous woman. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. I want you to be one of those us right now. Come on, this is the side of life, folks. We all got to die of the body. But we don't all have to die that second death. There is a late coming. The Bible says that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Just trust that God is so gracious and good that he can justify you freely through your faith. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast.
Amen. We come out here to preach to you the gospel of peace, the righteousness of God. Will you accept the righteousness of God? You say, no, I don't want that Bible stuff. I don't want none of that. You can keep it to yourself. You need the righteousness of God because we're all guilty. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. One day you will be put on trial. You will stand before God in judgment. It will not be a, a weighing balance. It's not going to be a good deeds versus bad deeds. It's going to be a, are you guilty or innocent? Have you done wrong or not? Right? It doesn't matter, matter if your record was clear and you just did your first wrong act. It doesn't matter. You're still guilty. A man is not judged according to his record of his past. He's judged according to whether he's committed sin against God or not. And then whether he's trusted in his son and been gifted the righteousness of God. How do you get to heaven? Well, if God is perfect, and he's got a perfect kingdom, would you not have to be a perfect person? Yes, you have to be a perfect person to get into heaven. But as we all know, we are not perfect people, and we cannot be perfect, nor will we ever be. So God sent his son to give you his righteousness. He paid your sin debt in your place. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. We all will die one day. And if you're not trusting in God's Son, you will die the second death, which is in hell. But you can be saved from the everlasting fire, from the everlasting torment. You can be saved from that if you'll accept the righteousness of God and stand just before God. You can have the charges dropped. You can stand innocent before him if you accept his righteousness how do you gain the righteousness of god some people would ask the bible says out of him that worketh not but believeth on him who justifieth the ungodly his faith is kind of righteousness you see it's not your works it's your faith believing on jesus not believing in jesus you can believe in the tooth fairy it doesn't change anything right but are you believing on Jesus? Are you trusting in Him to get you to heaven and nothing else? None of your deeds, none of your sacraments, no baptism, nothing. Faith in Christ and faith alone. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. See, your deeds can't get you into heaven. Only His righteousness. Only the righteousness of the only man who ever walked perfect on this earth. Jesus Christ. He lived his entire life perfectly for you. He was mocked and scorned and spit upon, crucified, and third all, he did not mock and scorn. He didn't say no. He didn't give up on man. No, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He saw the ignorance of mankind. He saw their unrighteousness and saw they needed a Savior. And he completed that task. Jesus died on the cross for you. He paid that sin debt. The only thing that will pay your sin debt is death. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Right? That's, that's why way back, way back when, they used to sacrifice animals and such. Now we don't do that. Why? Because Jesus Christ was the ultimate sacrifice. The only way you can pay for your sins is dying. And there's no salvation in that. You can be saved from that second death after death. You can be saved out of that through Christ our Lord. If you'll accept his free gift of eternal life. Believe on Jesus and you'll be saved. The Bible says the wicked walk on in darkness and know not at what they stumble. They don't even realize what they pass up. They don't realize what they ignore. And they don't even realize how great of a gift. That we offer, that Christ offers, that we're here to share with you, that we've been given the righteousness of God, a free, get out of jail free card, if you will. That's what it is. All you have to do is believe on Jesus, and you'll be saved. The wicked walk on in darkness and know not of what they stumble. What do they stumble at? Every wind of doctrine, even salvation if you're not saved, they stumble at everything. 
They don't even know what they're doing in life because they're blinded by the God of this world. He hath blinded the minds of them, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine into them. That's what we're here to do. Jesus Christ came into the world. He, he came to save sinners, first of all. And I'm one of them. I'm a saved sinner. And I'm here to shine the light, the glorious gospel of Christ into the hearts of the blind world. Come to share it with all men, that they might be saved. All you have to do is believe on Jesus, not in him. Even the devil believes in Jesus. He knows he's real, but he's not trusting in him, that's for sure. Believe on Jesus, and you'll be saved. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not out of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is his grace. It is only through his grace and his goodness that you're alive and that you are given this chance to hear this gospel. It is only through his grace and his mercy that you can hear this and that you stand alive today. If God's long suffering was put to a stop, if he didn't have mercy, he would come back right now, those clouds would roll back and he'd judge the world. He'd send every guilty person to hell and take the innocent with him, the saved. But no, you're in a moment, you're in time where God says, I'll be a little long suffering and I'll wait. Wait a little longer. Wait a little longer, Lord Jesus, so that we can get the others in. That's what that song says. So we're out here in the hot sun to preach to you the gospel of Christ so that many will be saved. All right, it's not for our profit. We're not out here self-righteous preachers. We're here to share the love of Christ. We're here to give you the free gift of eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You cannot get into heaven except through Jesus Christ. It's not Buddha or Muhammad. It's not Mary. It's not anybody else. It is Jesus. He said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. He is the door you can enter in and be saved. Right? Believe on Jesus and you'll be saved. share the gospel of Christ. Many will see this Bible. Many will see the King James Bible and they'll say, many just look at the Bible as just the Bible, right? It's just, it's the book, right? Everybody puts it on the shelf. Many mock at it. Many have their own versions. It's all about preference. You can have your version. I can have mine. But is it about preference or is it about the word of God? Do you desire truth or do, or you, do you desire what makes you feel good? Do you desire other men's versions? Do you desire the truth of God or the words of men? The Bible says, We came out preaching with the words of men wisdom, lest your faith should stand in the words of men, but in the power of God. 
Everybody knows you can't trust men. Not really. They give up on you, right? They're not faithful. You can't trust them. But there's a man you can trust. There's a man that's sticking closer to the Lord. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen? Now you can see the Bible that I hold and the rock and the storm. But the Bible says that there is none righteous, not not one. Right? We're all guilty. We all stand guilty before God because we've all done wrong. It says they're all gone out of the way. There's none. They're all gone out of the way. They're together. Become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. We live such vain lives. You go about, you get a job, you work eight hours, maybe more. Overtime, you come home, you eat, you go to bed. That's about it. Maybe you have some fun on the weekends. Maybe you party a little. But what does it profit you at death? What do all these revelings and the things that you do on a daily, day-to-day -day life, what do they do for you at death? Because ultimately, where are we all going to end up? In the grave. And that's the truth. Are you scared of death? Do you question what's after death? I think that's one of the biggest questions of man. Those who don't believe in God, what happens after death? If you don't believe in God, maybe you believe in Muhammad. In your heart you say, well, I go I go to here. I don't know what they call it. You go to purgatory maybe, right? But you know there's something after death. Purgatory is not a place. There's one or two places you're going. Heaven or hell. Do you stand guilty before God or do you stand innocent before God? The Bible says there's none righteous. No, not one. I'm guilty too. But you can be gifted the righteousness of God. You can be gifted that. If you believe on Jesus, trust in him to get you to heaven, and he'll give you his righteousness. Out of him that worketh not, but believeth on him who justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Your faith. Why? Because you can do a good deed now and do a sin the next minute. Man is not faithful. God is faithful and just to forgive. He's the only faithful one. So put your faith in Christ, believe on him once, and you'll be saved Believe on him and you'll be saved and sealed. You can't do anything to get out of heaven if you try. It says their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Is that not our lives? Destruction and misery. We get older, as the days go by, our bodies break down. Many people here know what that's like. Your body's breaking down. Your life is miserable. You just work, and it's just, it's just horrible. Life is just sucks, does it not? It does. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Man has no peace. They have no hope. Only God has hope, and you can be given that hope in Christ. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. Man has no peace with God except through belief. Putting your faith in Christ, the Bible says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. You can have peace with God. Why do you want to have peace with God? Because the Bible says, as it is appointed unto man once to die after this, the judgment. You'll be judged by a holy and righteous God in the day appointed, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men. Believe me, he's going to judge mine too. He's going to judge the secrets of men. And I'm sure that you want to be at peace with the holy eternal God. You do want to be at peace with him. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through putting your faith in God, you can be given his righteousness, and therefore you stand, stand just before God, and you have peace with him. Because... He'll judge you innocent because you have been gifted the righteousness of God. The Bible says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith. You see, our good deeds can't attain unto the righteousness of God. Only our faith can only through faith can we be gifted the righteousness of God. It is by faith of Jesus Christ. 
It's unto all and upon all them that believe. It is pre presented unto you today, but it is upon you if you believe on him, upon all them that believe. But there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why it's by faith. If our righteousness, if our salvation is through our good deeds, it wouldn't work. Because we can't do good deeds like that. We can't be perfect. We can't stay perfect. Because you can do a good deed now, but ten minutes later you do a bad deed. Right? You curse somebody out on the side of the road. Right? You pass and they cut you off or something. Right? We all do wrong deeds. And we're all unrighteous. Right? Well, that's why God sent his son. That's why he gifts he gives us his righteousness through faith. The righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. And it's upon all them that believe. Because all have sinned. Because we're all guilty. That's why it's by faith. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You see? Justified freely. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to do anything. You are freely justified before God through faith in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be a propitiation which is basically your paying sacrifice the man who paid your sacrifice he was your propitiation he took your place he appeased the wrath of God and what a shame it is if you would miss out on that it's already been paid all you gotta do is believe and you're given that it's all already been done it's already been done, but many will keep on going and try and establish their own righteousness. But all the work has already been done in Christ. Christ said, it is finished. Right? It is finished, he said. He finished the work. He finished the entire work of having to be righteous to get to heaven. He lived the righteous life, and then he died a sinner's death. To pay for our sins. What a gift. He did that for you. He finished it. That's what he said. And then he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. You see what he did? He, he literally gave us a free, he gave us a get out of free jail card at no cost. All you have to do is believe. Accept it. That's all you have to do. It's just as free as if a lawyer said, hey, I'll fight your case. And you say, oh, sure. Same thing. You're just accepting it. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the only one to get you into heaven and that he's the one getting you to heaven, no other man, no other deed, then you're given the righteousness of God and you stand just before him. It says, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness. See, it's not ours. It's Jesus' righteousness that will get us into heaven. His righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. See, he gives us righteousness because God will by no means clear the guilty. He will by no means give the guilty righteousness except through faith. You see, if you're just guilty and you're living your life and you don't want Christ, he can't clear you of your guilt. You're going to be damned. You're going to be judged. But you can be given that righteousness. It says, where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. A man is justified by faith and through nothing else, putting his faith in the righteousness of God and in Jesus Christ and the work that he did on the cross. Believe on Jesus and you'll be saved today. He is your only hope. He's the only one who satisfies the hungry soul. Right? You notice that vibe is pit in your heart. You always got to do something. You got to take that next thing, eat that next thing, go to that next place, have some fun. But you can't satisfy your heart. You can't satisfy your heart. You're always doing something. You ever notice that? But the Bible says that he satisfieth the hungry soul. And he filleth, he satisfieth a longing soul. And filleth the hungry soul with goodness. You see, Jesus Christ is the only one who can fill that bottomless pit. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. The only one who has been here from eternity to eternity, who is everlasting and infinite, only he can fill that bottomless pit in your heart because nothing else is infinite like that. Only the great God who has made that place in your heart can fill it. He made that place in your heart. 
You can fill it with Christ, put your belief on Him, trust in Him to get you to heaven, and you'll be saved. He will fill your hungry soul with goodness. Believe on Jesus today, you'll be given the righteousness of God, and you'll be saved from wrath from Him. Amen. everybody. We're here today to give the best news that's ever come to this world. How that Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago came into this world to save sinners. We are not out here as self-righteous preachers today. God will save drug addicts, prideful, hateful, angry, wicked, drunk, alcoholic, drug addict, whatever sins you have committed against God can be forgiven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, how that Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. Jesus said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's the first thing that we have to realize. That's how we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that there is none righteous, no, not one. That there is none that understandeth, that there is none that seeketh after God. God says that he looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek after God, but that we have altogether become unprofitable, that there is none that doeth good, no, not one. So we have to realize we are guilty before God according to his word. The Bible says that by God's law, there is going to be no flesh justified in his sight. God's law proves to us that we are not good people. God said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But Jesus said, even if we look with lust in our heart towards a man or a woman, we are guilty of committing adultery. God says, thou shalt not bear false witness or tell a lie. But the Bible says that the poison of asps is under our lips, that we have all lied at one point or another. The Bible says, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written. So God concludes that he is the only one just, he is the only one righteous, and the only way that we can be found not guilty on the day of judgment is by trusting in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Jesus died in our place. He hung upon the cross of Calvary. He was crucified for our sins, buried, and rose again the third day for our justification, that we can be found not guilty on the day of judgment. God condemned sin in the flesh upon Jesus Christ. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus Christ became sin for us so that we could be made righteous by God according to what Jesus Christ did for us upon the cross of Calvary. The Bible says that Christ was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. That means that he was delivered for our sins and he was raised again that we may be freely forgiven of every single sin that we have committed against God. The Bible says that Jesus Christ came and died for our sins while we were yet without strength. That in due time Christ died for the ungodly. He has not come and died for righteous people. We must first realize that we are ungodly and that we need a Savior. And Jesus Christ is that Savior. The Bible says that there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. God Almighty commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that's why he says today, look unto me, 
all ye ends of the earth, and be ye saved, for he is God, and there is none else. There is one God and Father of all, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all things are made. The Bible says in the book of John, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. He is full of grace. He is compassionate. He is slow to anger. He is long-suffering. He is kind. The Bible says that God is love. In Him is no darkness at all. But mankind, on the other hand, God says that we are by nature the children of wrath and the children of disobedience that we are living in this world of darkness, that there is a kingdom of darkness and that there is a kingdom of light. And if you are guilty of your sins today and unforgiven by the blood of Christ, then you are living in darkness. The Bible says that people professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and the four-footed beasts and creeping things. And so God gave them over. And this is what's taking place in our world today. And this is what the Bible talks about. That in the last days, men are going to be lovers of their own selves, proud, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, covenant breakers, all these things that are taking place in our world today is evidence that we are living in the last days. And there is a day coming, folks, when God is going to judge this world in righteousness. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? He is going to come again and judge this world in righteousness. Back in the days of old, in the days of Sodom, in the days of Gomorrah, in the days of Noah, God sent a flood upon the world of the ungodly, and he destroyed every single human being except for eight people. And people say, wow, that's pretty extreme. But we have to understand how evil mankind is. The Bible says that God saw the thoughts and the intents of the heart of man, that it was only evil and evil continually and that it grieved God that he had made man upon the earth. And just as it was back in those days, the same things are taking place today. People are loving evil. Their feet are swift to run to evil. And God says that he hates certain things. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. These things that the Lord hates. And so we have to understand that God is love but that God also hates evil. All ye that love the Lord hate evil. That's what God says. And so God one day is going to be just and the justifier of them which believeth in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus Christ, God will give you his own righteousness, which is by faith. He will forgive you of all of your sins and cleanse you of all of your unrighteousness. He will give you everlasting life as a free gift. You can become a child of God and in joint heir with Jesus Christ by faith that is in him. But the Bible says, if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Folks, God does not want you to die as his enemy. But you have to understand today, if you are guilty of just one sin against God, then you are guilty of breaking all of God's law. For God says, if you keep the whole law, but yet offend in one point, you are guilty of breaking it all. And so if we have never loved God and loved our neighbor as ourselves perfectly, then we are guilty of breaking the first two commandments. None of us have loved people and loved God above everything, and so we are all guilty in the eyes of God, and we all need a Savior. And the Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
God over 2,000 years ago became a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted Jesus Christ and given him a name which is above every name. Jesus Christ was crucified. They put him in a tomb for three days and three nights, but on the third night he rose again from the dead. Over 500 people saw Jesus Christ after his resurrection when he was then taken up in a cloud where he is now seated at the right hand of God the Father. But one day again, Jesus is coming back to this earth and he is going to judge this world in righteousness. The Bible says that those people obey not the gospel, what awaits them? Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned in God's law shall be judged by God's law, but as many as have sinned without God's law shall be judged without law. The Bible says, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. And none of us here today have kept God's law perfectly because we have sin that dwells in our flesh. The Apostle Paul said that in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. Paul says that we are not good, we can't do good, maybe in the sight of men we've done a few good things, but the reality is that in the sight of a holy and a righteous and a perfect God, that we are all as an unclean thing, that there is no man that is good. God says all of our unrighteousnesses are as filthy rags. God is so holy and so righteous and so perfect that he cannot even look upon iniquity. God hates evil, and he must judge it one day. There is a place called heaven, and there is a place called hell. And God is going to judge us, and all of us here today are going to go to heaven or go to hell when we die. The Bible says that the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Hell is not a place that God wants people to go, but people that reject God, that hate God, that have pleasure in unrighteousness more than they had pleasure in the truth of God and His Word, God is going to condemn them because He is righteous and He is just, and He is going to be just in condemning them. But that is not something that God wants for any one of us here today, folks. For God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants every single human being to come into a relationship with Him. It doesn't matter if you're a sodomite, if you are hateful, if you are a jealous person, if you are a drunkard, if you are a lover of money or a lover of pleasure. I was a drug addict for almost 15 years of my life. And Jesus Christ came to save sinners. Amen. It doesn't matter what sin, murder, adultery, covetousness, fornication, every single sin in this world unto the Father but by Him. That's the only way we can get back to God the Father is by trusting in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God sent His Son to die in our place he was buried and rose again the third day for our justification. The Bible says He was delivered for our offenses, our lying, our pride, our hatred, all the evil that's going on in this world today. God sent His Son to die for these things that we might not be condemned with the world on the day of judgment. We can be found not guilty on that day because of what Christ Jesus did for us. The Bible says that we can be justified by faith through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to God's mercy that He saves us. It is a gift of God. There's nothing we can do to earn it. 
We must just believe that God is faithful, that what he promised, he is able also to perform. Back in the old days, God made a man named Abraham a promise. And God, or Abraham believed God by faith. And God counted Abraham righteous because of the faith that he had. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. <laughs> That's the only way we can please God today. It's by the same faith that Abraham had. When we believe that God is faithful, that God will keep his promises, and we trust in what God tells us to trust in, God gives us everlasting life as a free gift. The Bible says that the wages of our sin is death, but that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's a free gift of God that can be given by simply believing the gospel. We all know that there is a God, and we are all going to stand before him one day in judgment. For God says, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us here today must give account of himself to God. As it is appointed unto men once to die, then after this is the judgment. Once we die, our bodies go back to the dust from which they were made, and then we go to be judged by the Lord. And God says he is going to repay every man according to their deeds. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor, immortality, but unto them that are contentious and obey not the truth, the Bible says indignation and wrath upon every soul a man that doeth evil. And all of us have done some sort of evil in our lifetimes. And God says that he is by no means going to clear the guilty. The soul that sins, it shall die. And that's why we are all going to the grave today. By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. But by the obedience of one man, that is Jesus Christ, shall many be made righteous. By Adam's sin, death entered into this world here. By one man's sin, death entered into the world. And death has passed upon all men today, for that all have sinned. No one of us is perfect. I know people are quick to say, I'm not perfect, don't judge me. But the reality is that God is going to judge us all according to righteousness. And without the blood of Jesus Christ covering us, not a single person on the earth has a chance to escape the day of God's judgment. God says, thinkest thou this, O man, that judges people that do evil things, and then you do the same things, how shall thou escape the judgment of God? God is saying, if we say people are husbands and wives for being drunks, if we condemn and judge other people, but then we do the same things, how are we going to escape the judgment of God? And the answer is, none of us are. God is going to judge every single one of us, and God does not want you to die unforgiven of your sins. The Bible says that God is a consuming fire, that God's wrath is going to be poured out upon this earth one day, and upon the ungodly, he says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And that's terrifying, folks. If we had to stand before God, I was a heroin addict, I was a drunk, I was a fornicator, I was a pathological liar. If I had to meet God when I was in my sin, God would have thrown me into hell so quick, my head would have spun. But thank God that he is gracious that he is merciful, and that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, that we have a, sta a chance to stand not guilty on that day because of God's grace. God's grace is so amazing, and God's grace teaches us in this world, in this present evil world, 
denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And why does God want us to live like that? Why does God's grace teach us to live like that? It's because that is the nature and the character of God Almighty. He is perfect. He is just. He is righteous. God bless you guys. He is holy in all of his ways. Folks, this world here today is passing away. And that's why God says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And this world is passing away. God is going to judge this world one day in fervent heat. The Bible says he is going to make a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness and only the righteous ones are going to enter therein and it's not any righteousness we have ourselves i was the worst of the worst i was shooting up heroin i was addicted to cocaine i was a fornicator and a liar but god saved me at my lowest and that's what god's grace does god came to save sinners and we all know that there is a god because God has revealed himself to us. The invisible things of God from the creation of this world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even God's eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. All of us have a conscience. We know when someone does evil that it's not right. If somebody kills babies, that's not right, that's evil. And we know the judgment of God. That proves that we know God's judgment against sin. So on that day, no one is going to say, I did not know that there is a God. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. They are abominable. They are filthy. They have done abominable iniquity is what God's word says about every single human being alive on this earth today. But the good news is the God, God bless you, sir. It's the good news of the grace of God, how God sent his son to die for us. He died in our place. He was delivered for our sins, buried, and rose again for our justification. For Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was crucified, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It was prophesied that Jesus Christ would come into this world thousands of years ago. And just as it was prophesied, Jesus Christ came and fulfilled everything perfectly. God says his word is true from the beginning and every one of his righteous judgments endureth forever. God's word is forever settled in heaven. And we are watching God's word play out in front of us today. The Bible talks about in the last days, these things that we're seeing today, men being lovers of their own selves, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, without natural affection, covenant breakers, implacable, unmerciful, these are the things that we're seeing all around us day after day. People are calling evil good and good evil. And God says, woe unto them that put light for darkness and darkness for light. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And people today are saying that sodomy is good. Killing your babies is good. Transsexualism is good, lying is good, fornication is good, drunkenness is good, covetousness is good, the love of money is good, but these things are evil, folks. And this is a day that we're living in today. And one day, God is going to come again. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days of Noah, they were eating, they were drinking, they were giving in marriage. 
They had no concern whatsoever for the things of God. God sent out a preacher to them, Noah, to preach unto them, telling them a flood is coming upon the earth. God's judgment is coming upon the earth. And they probably mocked and scoffed at him and laughed at him and made fun of him. But then one day God's judgment came upon this world and God destroyed all but eight people because of their wickedness. And let's not try to make God out to be the bad guy here. The reality is that God was sparing humanity for the wickedness of man. And that's the same thing today. We see it all around us. Mankind is destroying himself day after day, year after year. Things are getting worse and worse every day. And it's because of the condition of the heart of man. God says in his word that the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? He says, I, the Lord, search the reins and try the hearts to give every man according to their deeds. God is not like a man. We see the outward of the man, but the Bible says that God does not look on the outward appearance, but that God trieth the hearts of man. God's word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword dividing asunder soul and spirit and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart we only have a few years here folks the bible says what is your life it is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away our life here we have maybe 60 70 80 years and then we die the preacher said Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That is the duty of man to fear God and to keep his commandments, but none of us have done that, myself included. The only one that kept every commandment law, statute, and ordinance of God Almighty is the Lord Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. God became a man and died for the sins of the world. For his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins. The Bible says that uh, for a good man, some would even dare to die, but that God commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The greater love hath no man than this, than that one lay down his life for his friends. So the best love we can show is when someone lays down their life for their friends, but God did it when we were his enemies. That's how powerful God's love is. And people, God does not want to throw people in hell today. But make no mistake about it, that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God hath been manifest in them. So God is loving, but God is also going to pour out his wrath upon the ungodly. The Bible says in the book of Thessalonians, when he shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them which know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is so simple. When you just trust in Christ's death, his burial, his resurrection and you put your full faith and all your heart trust in the finished work of christ you are saved and god will give you his holy spirit blessed is the man unto whom the lord will not impute sin blessed is the man unto whom sins are covered it's not right but guys seek the lord today while he may be found. The Bible says that 
Today is a day of salvation. None of us are promised tomorrow. God forbid it happen, but people could die today and go to meet God. And Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain this whole world and then lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There was a certain rich man. He was just building for himself greater and greater. He told his soul, I have much goods. I will take my rest. And God said, thou fool. This day is thy soul required from thee. And God took that man from the earth that one day. And so many people today are concerned about money, concerned about cars, clothes, women, food, vacations, all this stuff that does not profit for eternity. And our question to you today is, do you know when you are going to spend eternity when you die? It is appointed unto men once to die, then after this is the judgment. We are all going to die, stand before God, and we are either going to go to heaven or going to go to hell. If you go to hell, it's because you reject Jesus. If you go to heaven, it's because you accepted the grace of God and God forgave you of all of your sins. God is not unrighteous. The Bible says, let God be true, but every man a liar. God's ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. As the heavens are high above the earth, so are God's ways above our ways, and his thoughts above our thoughts. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? No one can teach God. God knows all things. God has never been surprised by anything. God has never needed anyone to teach him. He is infinite in his wisdom. His understanding is infinite. That is not something that carnal man or even spiritual man can understand. God is so much higher than mankind. And that's why I said, uh, the, the Bible says that God saw the thoughts of man, that the thoughts of man are vanity. This life here is vanity, that God saw the nations before him, and they are accounted as a drop in the bucket, and they are nothing, and we are less than nothing in the sight of God. God is so big and so powerful and so beyond this world that he sees mankind down here like little grasshoppers. The Bible says that the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. God is the creator of all these things. Jesus Christ created all things. By him they were and are created. He is the head of all things and by him all things consist. He was there with God from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. God made this creation perfect. He said it was good when he created mankind upon it, but mankind sinned against God. God said, Thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And sure enough, Eve got deceived by the serpent. She gave some to her husband. She gave some to her husband and he did eat and by one man's sin death entered into this world death has passed upon all men today for that all have sinned all of us are guilty in the eyes of god for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight it is only by the finished work of jesus christ that all of our sins can be forgiven the Bible says that Jesus Christ became a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth upon the tree, that the promise of God might come upon the Gentiles by faith that is in Christ Jesus. Today you can become a child of God, you can be reconciled to God, and translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son, by faith that is in Christ Jesus. Folks, God wants a relationship with every single one of us, but the reality is the Bible says that our sin separates us from God. 
that God is of pure eyes and to behold evil. God cannot look upon iniquity, and so our sins, our lying, our pride, our hatred, drug addiction, covetousness, the things that go on in our hearts separate us from God. And if you are apart from Christ today, the Bible says that the wrath of God abideth on the children of disobedience because of their sins. The Bible says that people's hearts are darkened and that their minds are darkened. They think that they know God, but they don't understand who God is because the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us that are saved it is the power of God. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. Unto the Jews it's a stumbling block, Unto the Greeks it is foolishness, but unto us that are saved, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So it pleased God by the preaching of the gospel to save those that believe. It's the simplicity of the cross of Christ. God's Son loved this world and the people in it so much that he willingly sacrificed himself. He went as a sheep dumb before his shearers. He went to the cross of Calvary for his great love wherewith he loved us. He died in our place and he rose again so that we might be reconciled to God. And we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ today as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. There's a day coming for all of us, folks. And if we die without Christ, you are going to die in your sins. God does not want that for you. God does not want you to die condemned, to die guilty, and to end up in hell with the devil and his angels. God wants you to be saved from the things that you have done against him. All of the unrighteous things that every single one of us have done. All of us, I'm sure, have told one lie or been prideful one time. And God says, these six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed blood, feet that are swift and running to evil. These things God hates, and one day God is going to bring every work into judgment. As it is written, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, people are going to be guilty on that day if they die apart from Jesus Christ. Folks, seek the Lord today. says that we are made as the filth of the world and the off-scouring of all things unto this day. We don't mind it. It's what God intends so that God can get all the glory, not man. We come out here today to preach to you the gospel of your salvation. See, this ain't about me, folks. I'm just a lowly sinner saved by grace trying to give you that same salvation that I've received. I'm not out here for myself. This is about you. The gospel of your salvation. You say, preacher, what is the gospel of my salvation? That Christ died for you. It's personal. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth.
We don't have to guess what God's will for our lives is today, folks. God's will is that you would be saved and that you would come to the knowledge of the truth. So you say, how do I get saved, preacher? You must believe that Christ died for your sins, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. Well, Christ still died for you. And if you trust in his blood, God will justify you freely by his grace. Christ came to save sinners, not the righteous. Fools make a mock at sin, man. One day you're going to die. You'll stand before God and give an account of yourself. As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Only a fool would mock at sin. You will spend an eternal day in the lake of fire. If you stand before God, you will have God's righteousness covering your sin. The Bible says David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without lips. Saying, Blessed is the man unto whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord will not impute sin. Every one of us has sinned, folks. I got it. You got it. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ, whom God set, set forth to be a propitiation. You say, what is that? It's a payment to appease the wrath of God. The God of heaven is a God of judgment. He is a God of justice, and He is going to bring every work into judgment one day. And God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Jesus Christ was made to be unto you a propitiation to appease the wrath of God. He is your payment. That sin which puts you at enmity with God it makes you an enemy of God through the blood of the cross, Jesus Christ. You might be reconciled back to God. If you will put your trust in Jesus that he died for you, God will justify you freely by his grace. You will receive eternal life. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness. You say whose? God's. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness that he, God, might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Paul said, where is boasting them? It is excluded by what law of works, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You cannot earn your way to heaven. Your good deeds, Isaiah said, our righteousness is as filthy rags before a holy God. Christ died for you. We're not here for our own selves. We're out here constrained by the love of Christ. He died for the sins of the world. The love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again. You know why I come out here? It's because Jesus Christ died for my sins. And I figure if he can die for me, then I can live for him. 
so that you would hear the gospel of your salvation, you would trust in that blood of Jesus, that you would hear that message of salvation today, believe it by faith, and receive eternal life. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We're leaving soon, folks. God may begin to judge the world in righteousness tomorrow. You might drive down the road and get in a wreck. It is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. We all have to face the grave. This life, the Bible says, it is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then it vanisheth away. I'm already getting old and gray. My hips are going. I was young yesterday, man. It goes fast, guys. God bless you, sir. goes fast. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today, and you will be saved. Tomorrow may never come. You might have a heart attack. That ambulance that comes and we hear all the time, it may be coming for you next. You don't know what's going to happen, folks. Trust. Don't say to me, oh, I'll get so, preacher. Today I want to go and drink and party and revel. Listen, Christ died for sinners. He didn't die for righteous men. Don't think that you have to be a righteous man in your flesh before you can get saved. We were up here one time preaching at a football game, and a guy just said, guys, appreciate you, but not today. You know what he meant by that? He said, just I don't want to get saved right now. Let me just drink and have fun today. Well, sir, you can be saved today, and I don't advise it, but you can still drink and be saved. Listen, if, the, if we had to keep righteousness in our flesh, do you know what the Bible says that? Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He said, I do not frustrate the grace of God, if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Don't wait thinking you're going to wake up tomorrow sinless. You're not perfect and neither am I. There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that seek a doctor of God. They're all together become unprofitable. They have all gone out of the way. There's none that do it good. No, not one. I'm not good and neither are you. That's the bad news. But the reason I'm preaching to you that you're not righteous is that you can submit to the righteousness of God. That you would trust that He is the one who justifies sinners. Not us. Not our churches. Not our prayers. None of that stuff. Not those works of the flesh. Many people are trusting in a prayer they said when they were a child. If God said, Eric, why should I let you into heaven? You know what I answer to God? I say, God, you shouldn't. I'm a vile sinner. I spent a whole lifetime committing all manner of foolishness and sin and wickedness. But I say, but God, I read your word, and you told me that if I would trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, that through him you would cover my sins, and you would justify me freely by your grace. And he's going to say, Amen. Come on up. That's the right answer. A lot of people are going to stand before God. And he's going to say, Why should I let you in heaven? And they're going to say, Because I fed the poor. And I visited the widows. And I did this. And I did that. Me, me, me. God's going to say, Wrong answer. They are ignorant. What are they ignorant of? Paul said, My prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have the zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. That is the gospel. 
that God will justify you freely by His grace. You don't earn it. You don't go to church to get it. All you got to do is believe that God can save you. Trust in the blood of the crucified one in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. The Bible says, what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth. On him that justifieth the ungodly, that's me folks, and you too. His faith is counted for righteousness. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God loved you so much that while you were still a sinner, he sent Jesus Christ into the world to die for you. Now you understand why we do this. You understand the love of God. God's commended love toward this world. This whole world lies in wickedness, but it's not God's fault. Man wants to cast unrighteous judgment upon God. Mankind says to God, God, why do you allow the rapist to exist? God, why do you allow fornicators? Why do you allow murderers? All these things. Do you know why God allows these things? Do you know why pedophilia exists on the earth today? I can tell you why. For the same reason that your lying mouth is allowed to be here too. If you want God to judge the pedophile, he's not going to stop there. He will bring into judgment every sin. The Bible says that all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Have you ever lied? Me too. Guess what? That means we burned our part in a lake of fire. Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory that through the gospel we don't have to bear that condemnation and judgment anymore. We've all sinned, folks, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't have to convince you of that. You know it. But being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, there is redemption in the blood of the cross. You can be justified. God bless you, man. You can be justified right now. Through God's mercy, His long-suffering, His forbearance, man looks at this world, the wickedness in it, and he hates God. But what you don't understand, man, is that the wickedness is allowed to remain because of God's goodness. You say, what, preacher? That's a ridiculous statement. It's true. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasure of that wrath unto thyself against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. God is withholding His wrath right now. That wrath is not being poured out on the world because God wants you to be saved today. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. You're a sinner. God wants you saved, sinner. Trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. The Philippian jail said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The answer is not go to church. The answer is not get baptized. The answer is not say a prayer. Do you know what the answer was? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Christ said it is finished, not we're just getting started. If you're trusting what he did, 
that he shed his blood on the cross for your sins. It's personal. He died for you, guys. I'm not out here for me. I'm already saved. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. I'm already saved, are you? Do you know where you're going when you die? It's quick. We're all facing the grave any moment. It is appointed on the man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. The Bible says, For as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, so that every one of us shall give God bless you. The part of himself to God. The Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The Bible says for as the crackling of the thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of the fool. You know why it says this? Because the fool has set in his heart, there is no God. He says it in his heart to try and convince himself that there is no God, but you are looking at the power and Godhead all around you in creation. To the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Where are you going when you die, sir? Looks like you're almost there. You're going to die very soon and you're going to go meet your maker. Prepare to meet thy God. You can laugh now, but you ain't going to be laughing when you face God in judgment. He's going to render to you for every deed you've done and for all of the wicked thoughts in your mind. The Bible says, Judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring the light, the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Then shall every man have his praise of God, because God is a perfect judge. He will not spare the guilty. I was once guilty of death, eternal, because I am a wicked sinner. I have sinned against God, and God, before I knew the gospel, if I had died in my sins, God would have given me my part in an eternal lake of fire. He has to, folks. You wouldn't live in a country that didn't have a jail system, would you? Everybody just running around, total chaos and craziness. God has to have a judgment against sin, or he's not righteous. The righteous judge must render to every man according to his deeds. There is no respect of persons with God. God is going to get it right, folks. Every judgment that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and overcome when thou art judged. You don't have to be afraid, though, if you just believe the gospel. If you just trust that Christ died for you, you can have peace with God. You can be reconciled back to God, and you no longer have to fear where you're going when you die. Men like to pretend like they're not afraid to die I don't see it. You know why? Because I actually know where I'm going when I die, and it's still scary. I've had my heart flutter on me, man, and just the terror comes ripping into you. It's scary to die. Y'all think it's funny now. It's not going to be funny. But you can't have peace today. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have any peace when you're on your deathbed and you start sucking air and you know you're about to head out of here, are you going to have peace? Because you can have it right now through faith in the gospel. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins. You got sin, I got sin. The only difference between you and me is I have remission for my sins. But I trust in the blood of Jesus Christ.
God set him forth as my payment. When I put faith in that gospel, the Bible says to declare at this time his righteousness, that God might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. You got to be saved through faith, folks. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Christ died for you, sir. He died for you and me. If you trust in his blood, God will justify you. That's mankind for you. If I stood right here and said, free cell phones, there'd be lines around the block. Free pizza. Picture I want free pizza. Give it to me right now. I offer you eternal life freely by God's graces, and you say no thank you. I'll never understand it, but it's the truth. That's how we know we got the right gospel. It has a twofold effect. And those that believe, it's glory, it's thankfulness. And those that perish, they can't stand it. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish, what? Foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. I know I look like a fool, folks. That's exactly the intended purpose. God is saving sinners today. For the preaching of the cross is it not that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, get it, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. This foolish preacher right here is exactly how God is saving sinners. God sent us to preach to you the gospel of your salvation. That Christ came into the world, he died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. He shed his blood on the cross and...
know by the two videos put together, I guess. Yeah, that's a good story. That's what Billy says.